Do you want to become an expert in Bible prophecy? Uh, stick around and find out how. Welcome to the program today. My name is Mono Gonzalez and I'm here in studio with Dr. Tommy Ice. Welcome. Good to be with you. Yeah, we have been discussing a lot of things and really we recognize that there is a lot of confusion out there about end times and here we are living in really serious times and it makes a lot of people wonder and ask questions and so uh, Tommy is an absolute expert in this and I wanted to grill him since he said he was willing. And um, when we look about uh, the confusion today, um, one of the things that I see is a lot of the confusion comes even with religious people, uh, different theologies and, and different perspectives. But one of the things that I think comes down is um, those taking a different hermeneutical perspective on even the first uh, prophecies of Jesus versus the second. I mean, let's, let's define what hermeneutics is and let's talk about that consistent approach. Yeah, hermeneutics is simply the uh, method or process of interpreting literature. Mm -hmm. So in, in that sense, um, why do you think there is this confusion today? I mean, we see it, um, we see it all over the place, even in the popular frame well, of reference. Well, because people introduce other factors that mm -hmm. don't belong in the hermeneutical mm -hmm. process. In other words, uh, I believe that the Bible can be interpreted what they call literally, and, and the word literal is used in two ways in linguistics. One, for your... Uh, interpretive approach, in other words, what does the text say mm -hmm. in its context, et cetera, and all of that. And then you discuss whether a word or a phrase is denotative or connotative, mm -hmm. in other words, literal or it's a figure of speech. So, you know, for example, the word run, uh, run to the store. There's a run in her stocking. You see, mm -hmm. and so one would be uh, a, a denotative or a plain literal. Mm -hmm. The other would be a, a figurative use of the word "run." And there's all kinds of illustrations. That w once you start talking about it, people realize that they use uh, probably more metaphors and and uh, things like that in their everyday conversation than they mm -hmm. would otherwise realize. Mm -hmm. But because they're familiar with the language. You know, then they understand mm -hmm. what people mean because of context. Context limits meaning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people just grab a word and study it out and they take the meaning from an, one passage over here and they plug it into over here when it mm -hmm. doesn't, it's not supported by the context, yeah. you see. So it, it's, it's the idea of studying the Bible in its context and what it meant by what it says, so to speak. So how does, uh, how does, uh, interpreting the Bible uh, in the context, literally. Um, how does that uh, apply to prophecy? I mean, is prophecy can be, at least from some people, I mean, there's a lot of signs in the book of Revelation, we'll talk about that later specifically, but uh, how, does, how does it work with prophecy? Do we have a different uh, interpretive method to understanding prophecy? Not really. Uh, you know, the book of Revelation, for example, has 39 Sign, uh, not signs, but figures of speech mm -hmm. in it. But every one is either uh, half of them are defined in the book of Revelation. For example, it says the, the candles are seven churches. Mm -hmm. You see, it explains it. It tells you mm -hmm. half of them. Mm -hmm. The other half are found somewhere else in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to, I was like to say, drop a tab of LSD and hallucinate. Mm -hmm in order to try to figure it out, mm -hmm. you just, uh, it takes work. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you s go and see where these symbols are used. Usually if they're introduced somewhere, uh, then they're uh, ob obviously establishes the meaning and, and you just look at the context and things. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the symbols, how are they used in context in the book of Revelation mm -hmm. and things like that? And often the key to understanding that is related to uh, maybe it's used in the book of uh, Genesis or something, mm -hmm. you know, like... Chase you know, it down. You have to chase it down, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, some of you have heard, and, and we, we are unapologetically, we, we talk about um, interpreting the Bible through a dispensational perspective, and yet 
we know um, through social media and others that dispensationalism has become a very uh, dirty word and it's, there's a lot of tags on it, but let, let's keep it simple. What are, what are the th three you know, basics of a dispensational uh, system, if we want right. to say that? Right, well let me first, first say dispensationalism is the theological conclusion mm -hmm. from interpreting the Bible literally. Mm -hmm. So dispensationalism is the, the uh, theological system that flows from literal interpretation. Mm -hmm. and so. That's what uh, you know. My professor, Dr. Ryrie, used to say at Dallas Seminary that uh, the consistent literal interpretation uh, is the method or approach which yields a distinction between God's plan mm -hmm. for Israel and God's mm -hmm. plan for the church. And the reason why that's important is because you have two plans uh, in relation to one another. Mm -hmm. So you have a distinction between what God's uh, dealing with Israel, who has an unfinished phase. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the current church age that we're in. And that results in uh, the purpose is the glorification of God mm -hmm. in history, you see. Yeah. Whereas covenant theology, for example, uh, believes that uh, everything revolves around soteriology or the doctrine of salvation. Mm -hmm. And so they go and every passage has to relate to salvation. And as a result, they don't take Israel's uh, historically, and most of them, not all of them, but many of them, mm -hmm. believe that God's finished with Israel mm -hmm. in history, and the church has forever replaced Israel. Well, what do they say when, um, you know, we're looking out of the world history, we see 1948 happen. For, for them, what's the significance of the modern state of Israel? Well, it, it's a spectrum. Uh, some believe it's just another nation. Some believe it's totally, uh, there's absolutely no significance to it. Others think that Israel may, you know, just like any of the nations, have some uh, role in God's uh, redemptive history. But basically they don't see uh, the, the plans and programs from the Old Testament especially. There's no continuity there between That's them. right, mm -hmm. being fulfilled uh, in the future for mm -hmm. Israel. Whereas we believe that uh, God's setting the stage by uh, recreating the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. bringing them back. Front. First of all, it's a major miracle that they maintain their identity. Mm -hmm. They're the only people group in the history of the world that uh, were kicked out of their land and maintained outside of their land their ethnic identity. Yeah, no assimilation in the surrounding cultures. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and uh, come back into their land. And so for people like us, we believe that's God's super sign of the end time mm -hmm. that he's getting ready to uh, bring on the events of the tribulation. Yeah. You know, many people don't know that you go back to Theodore Herzl and um, there was even talks of them getting a homeland in Uganda. <laughs> yeah, well, Herzl <laughs> never fell for that. Right. <laughs> yeah. But there was these discussions and you're like, yes. and, uh, but no, that wasn't, that's not what that, God had in That was plans. absolutely rejected. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that was offered by some people and Herzl and, and the, uh, the group of people that met every year starting in 1897, mm -hmm. uh, totally rejected that, but mm -hmm. yeah, people make a, often talk about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, as we think about prophecy um, and we think about words, you know, I encourage you to, um, to do study, and one of the things we're going to talk about is a, a book we have here that is really, it's a perfect overview of prophecy from beginning to end, chronologically all throughout the Bible, as well as thematically, and, and we're going to talk about the chronological aspect today, but as always, as you mentioned, you know, we hear these, these smears or these caricatures or these straw men about what dispensationalism says or doesn't say. And I encourage you, go back to the original sources. Look at Charles Ryrie's book and you can see um, really what it is um, in its original form versus these labels that are tossed on it. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about here is um, for those that are looking or new, because you know, we all have friends and family that are new to Bible prophecy, what, the simple question here, which we cover, you cover in the book here, but what is Bible prophecy? Well, Bible prophecy is simply God predicting the future, the mm -hmm. end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably about 45% has already been fulfilled and, uh, in relation to Jesus' first coming. And that's all we're saying is that just as it was fulfilled literally, mm -hmm. uh, he was you know, predicted to be in Bethlehem, he was born in Bethlehem, mm -hmm. you know, and very, many other issues mm -hmm. uh, from the tribe, certain tribe and all of this kind of stuff. We believe it's got the second coming passage, the future passage, is going to be fulfilled exactly the same way. Whereas, uh, so many 
uh, believe the church has somehow replaced Israel. Mm -hmm. And so they have to spiritualize. Spiritualize meaning, what we mean by that is they have to import a meaning from outside the text. Mm -hmm. That's the idea is you're, you're coming up whether you think it's justified in other passages or taught in other passages and you're uh, putting it in. And for example, the word Israel always means Israel. Mm -hmm always refers to the Jewish people. There's not yeah. one exception. Mm -hmm. And so some people try to say, well, the church is the new Israel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Never is that used in that way. In Galatians 6, it's talking about Jewish people who are believers. Yeah, uh, Galatians 6.16, look it up. And I would say don't fall for it because it's, right. it's crystal clear. That, that, that's the main one they use as, as the illustration. <gasps> we have one precedent and you're like, no, if you really look at it, it, it doesn't come to be that yeah, way. Yeah, and, and the passages get weaker from there. Uh -huh. you know, yeah, that exactly. That's the best it. one they yeah, have. So and that's that the one's, best mm -hmm. one, and it, that dog won't hunt. Right. <laughs> you know, as, as, we, as we talk about this, it's super important when you think about prophecy and approaching, um, when we look at first coming prophecies, they are, again, as you mentioned, they're, they're fulfilled in a very straightforward, literal way. And there's no reason why we would expect the second coming prophecies to be any different. And when we look at those scholars that would disagree with us, they're scholars, they love Jesus, we're not questioning their salvation. Right. Um, they interpret the first coming prophecies very literal. Right. And then they somewhere do. in the middle of the game, they kind of change the rules. And, you know, we don't read motives, but what are some of the reasons why? I mean, you're a historical theology guy. You know, what, where did that um, history of spiritualizing or allegorizing come from? Well, I think it came from after especially after the 300s or so, uh, <clears throat> you began to have them believing that the church was it. The f and people like uh, Jerome and Augustine and others said that, uh, th this, uh, that the uh, church age is the fulfillment of all prophecy. Mm -hmm. You see the church, Christ is the fulfillment of all. Well, Christ is the fulfillment of all messianic prophecy, no yeah. doubt, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that overruled a literal interpretation. So people have that idea when they come to passages. And so passages have to fit into their a priori theological idea. Mm -hmm. Now, they might say, well, y'all do the same thing. Well, we do have conclusions from our interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I'm sure we're not perfect in executing yeah. what we believe theoretically. But nevertheless, I think uh, the, the literal interpretation, which began to be restored in the late 1500s, early 1600s, mm -hmm. where you begin to see the uh, rise of premillennialism by the Puritans and other, mm -hmm. people are surprised to know that almost all the Puritans in America uh, up until the early 1720s were premillennial. Mm -hmm. They weren't dispensational. They, some of a few of them we're finding were actually were pre-trib, mm -hmm. but they believed in a future literal restoration of Israel. You know, if you're interested in, in these discussions, I, I really want to bring up our magazine because we're going to take a moment here so you can find out how to get this because we talk about Ezekiel 38, we talk about Israel, we talk about all the things, the current events that are going on as well as other articles. Certainly you've contributed articles to this magazine. So we're going to take a little break so you can see how to get this. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bob Ulrich, Gary Stearman's partner and the co-founder of Prophecy Watchers. I would love to tell you how you can become a subscriber to our wonderful Prophecy Magazine, creatively named The Prophecy Watcher. And ready for this? How you can get eight powerful Prophecy DVDs as a free bonus for subscribing today. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today. 
for your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers. You can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus. Eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value. But it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Well, that magazine is very good. We have a lot of great articles that are published there. And again, it's current, it's up to date. We're addressing theological as well as current events. And uh, we also have, you know, uh, Tommy's book here that he co-authored with Tim LaHaye, looking at just a full overview. One of the things that's brilliant about this book is uh, it's very comprehensive, but it also, as all of us, some of us are visual learners. It has, how many charts are in this book? There's 50. 50 charts, which are extremely helpful. And uh, it's divided and really into two sections, which is great. And, um, you know, one of the other things that you guys address here is uh, we've talked about what is Bible prophecy. We've talked about the approaches. Um, why should people even study Bible prophecy? Well, because it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And because Christianity is totally, Jewish, Judaism and Christianity are totally different from all the other religions of the world. And uh, they're the only ones uh, where you have a person who is separate and apart from his creation. All other religions uh, believe that, uh, you know, there's matter and energy and all of this, and there's just variations within that. And so only the Bible teaches that the God of the Bible is totally separate and apart mm -hmm. from his creation, and he created us for a purpose and reason. And uh, these charts show the purpose and reason for his creation. And it's something totally unique about Christianity because most all other religions basically come down to a philosophy or something. But the veracity of Christianity revolves around whether it's true historically. And that's why you have this excruciating details of, you know, in the reign of King so-and-so in the first year, you know, and all of this, it, it's, it's related to real history to things that actually happen because God is in, it's his story. He's in control of history. And so it is God's record or interpretation of what has happened and what will happen uh, in relation to, to the world. And so you have people who, t who believe that Israel has no future, for example, and, uh, are they are post-millennial. Those are people who believe that uh, the church is going to eventually convert the, either the entire world or most of the people in the world, mm -hmm. and the church is going to reign and rule. Well, you know, it doesn't look like it's happening. Well, they would say, not yet. Mm -hmm. Prophecy uh, was used, for example, in Hal Lindsey's Great Light Planet Earth. Uh, over 35, 40 million copies have been sold, and I'm old enough and remember the Jesus movement. That book was so pivotal in, in uh, millions of hippies, for example, getting saved. Coming to truth. Coming to truth to and truth, realizing yeah. uh, in the despair that their culture had produced that, uh, Je that Jesus had the answers. And uh, so prophecy, has, has, especially in my lifetime, uh, has played an important role and it's probably the most effective approach to use generally in evangelism mm -hmm. about look at what God's done in the past, look what he's going to do in the future. Are you ready? Are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready for the future? You know, mm -hmm. you know when you look at uh, Isaiah 44 or Isaiah 46, it, God is, 
he, he's almost mocking the, the idols and he, he draws them in and says, hey, come gather all of them around and let's get them all together in a room and we'll, we'll just do a comparison. And, and really what I hear you saying and scripture saying is that God's reputation is on the line. First of all, that he exists. Secondly, he's outside of time. And the end that he has put it down here so that he could be tested, right? Yes. Um, and, and those things seem, well not seem, they do, they point to his character not only for what he's done in the past, but what he's done at the cross, and as well as what he's going to do in the future. And so it really, why study by prophecy? Well, because as you mentioned, it's, it's, it really is a way to connect with God. Yeah, and as we said, one of the three things that Ryrie has, our ultimate purpose is to glorify God. And uh, he do, obviously salvation is an important part of that, but uh, it's even deeper or more sophisticated than that. Uh, he's demonstrating in history uh, that even though man has rebelled against him, he's still ruler and king, and, and, and he even humiliated himself through the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, to become a man, to become like us, even lower than us, yet he owned nothing when he was crucified, and uh, he gave himself for us so that we might be exalted. Uh, you know, by trusting Christ mm -hmm. and be part of the amazing blessing. You know, I love to get off on uh, the tremendous future that we have. If you have a heavenly biblical perspective of the future, then it provides uh, the endurance in the present knowing this is not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine the people that, you know, that have been persecuted down through church history uh, and things? and we look for the deliverance that Christ is going to bring. But he is demonstrating in history uh, that an unbeliever is an unbeliever is an unbeliever. As the gospel goes out back in the future during the tribulation, they, he even has angels preaching the gospel. Yeah. He, uh, every, by every person before the midpoint of the tribulation hears the gospel. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're totally evangelized. And so... Uh, they'll, they'll have no excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've been confused about prophecy or you've been looking, you know, what is the one good book that I, that I would like to have um, if I was to invest in something? This, this book really is a great book. It's going to have a special place on my shelf, not, not only because of its content, because it really is um, addressing the whole scope of the chronology of, of Bible prophecy, but the charts are so extremely helpful. And so we want to take a moment here to, to show you how you can get this very important book. Much confusion surrounds the study of Bible prophecy, which we find curious since most everyone wants to know what will happen in the future. Most churches don't teach or study Bible prophecy and rarely look at the role of Israel in future events. But the study of Bible prophecy shouldn't make us fearful. It gives us hope to face the future, knowing what lies ahead for the world. It should encourage us to share the gospel with everyone we meet as we enter a time the Bible calls the last days. Those future prophecies we find in the Bible are coming clearly into focus today. Dr. Tommy Ice's hardback book, Charting the End Times, is an amazing foundational study into Bible prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. This well-researched book contains 50 chapters and is available for your gift of $35 or more to support the outreach ministry of Prophecy Watchers. As always, shipping is included anywhere in the USA. It also comes with a free bonus DVD from Gary Stearman, The Rapture is the Resurrection, a detailed study on the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Just call the toll-free number on your screen 24-7 to get the book and bonus DVD. Or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. We also have a special package offer for you today. The A to Z Prophecy Package includes Dr. Ice's new book along with Tim LaHaye's book, Exploring Bible Prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. This is a book every Christian should own since it explores and explains every single prophecy in the entire Bible. These two resources will make you a Bible prophecy expert. 
The A to Z Prophecy Package also comes with two special bonuses, a copy of Gary's message on DVD, The Rapture is the Resurrection, and a very special one-of-a-kind DVD from the late Tim LaHaye presenting his very last sermon on Bible prophecy, a powerful and encouraging message delivered on his 90th birthday. The famous author of the Left Behind book series shared our desire to keep as many people out of the tribulation as possible. This special A to Z prophecy package is available for your gift of $60 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. The Bible gives us all the answers we need to face the complicated days ahead and gives us hope for the future. So be encouraged. Jesus is returning soon. Well, as we have a few minutes left, one of the things that I really want to address is, um, you know, I tend to think in terms of those that are out there that are critical of, of the way that we approach prophecy. And uh, many times they will take the book of Revelation. We understand the book of Revelation is complicated. Um, you don't, you know, <laughs> I remember sharing the gospel with somebody many years ago and they said, well, this is great. This is great. I've always wanted to read the book of Revelation. <laughs> I said, well, I wouldn't start there, right. you know, because let's talk about that. Why is the book of Revelation so complicated, so misunderstood, and really so misinterpreted in, in our current culture? Well, because it is the culmination of the whole Bible. And so you, you need to have some knowledge of the earlier parts of the Bible to see the culmination. But the, cul the book of Revelation, there, there's no book like it. They try to say, well, it's apocalyptic literature and all this. Well, there's no, there's no example of apocalyptic literature that has seven epistles to seven churches in it. It's the only one. Uh, the book of Revelation and, pro and prophecy as a whole shows you that the next time the Lord comes, the Jewish, and we're talking about the second coming, not the rapture before that, it requires the Jewish people at the end of Matthew 23 to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that's going to happen. That's the great thing about the Bible is you have a real hope in real life and things. And, it, and the message of the gospel is so important, you, you want to give your life for it, mm -hmm. to spread it, to see people come to Christ and build them up in the most holy, precious faith. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom, we couldn't have said it any better. I mean, when we think about what the gospel points us to, I mean, we, there's 50 chapters here. Um, we scratch the surface on maybe three. And uh, so I really want you to come back, if you will, okay. to discuss the second half because uh, the book is divided up very, very logically. Uh, but as always, you know, we, our job here at Prophecy Watchers is really to educate, to evangelize, and to share the, the message of, of the gospel and to show the truthfulness and the reliability of scripture. And prophecy is a great way to do that. So if you're watching and you're new and you're looking for a way to, to grow, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, he doesn't want us to be ignorant of prophetic truths. And so we encourage you to do that. And so we appreciate you watching today. We got to go for now, but we will see you next time. As always, uh, be watching, be ready, because we do know, as Jesus said, he is coming soon. Mm -hmm.